Welcome to David Copperfield's novel. Written by Charles Dickens. Summarized and prepared by Walla Samir. Audio recorded by AI Technology. Chapter 4 I fall into disfavor and shame. David went back to his new bedroom. The dog was still barking. He cried remembering Emily, asking himself why he went back home where no one wanted or cared for him. He cried himself to sleep. The next morning, David was awakened by Peggotty and his mother. Clara was asking him why he was sleeping rolled up in bed like that. He thought it was very strange to ask him that question. He hid his tears and pushed her away from him. Clara said to Peggotty, This is your fault, Peggotty, you cruel thing. She blamed her saying, How can you turn my own boy against me? or against anybody who is dear to me. She continued saying that Peggotty did that to upset her on her honeymoon. She also blamed David for being a naughty boy. David felt a strange hand on his arm. David felt a strange hand on his arm. He was Mr. Murdstone who said to his mother, What's this? Clara, my love, have you forgotten? You must be firm. Clara. I am very sorry, Edward. I meant to be firm, but I am so upset. Mr. Murdstone whispered to her. That's a bad start, Clara. She bent her head and David knew that he could make her do whatever he wanted. Mr. Murdstone asked her to go downstairs till he speaks with David. Then, he turned to Peggotty with a dark face asking her, Do you know your mistress's name? Because she called Clara Mrs. Copperfield, and Mr. Murdstone wanted to warn her not to do that again. When Mr. Murdstone and David were in the room alone, He sat on a chair and held David standing in front of him, looking into his eyes saying, If I have a difficult horse or dog to deal with, what do you think I do? David had no idea what he could do. Mr. Murdstone I beat him. I make him cry out. And if it cost him all the blood he had, Then, he asked David about the mark on his face. David answered it was dirt while the truth was the marks of tears. Mr. Murdstone ordered him to wash his face and to go down with him. David obeyed. When they got downstairs, Mr. Murdstone assured to Clara that David wouldn't upset her any more adding, we will soon improve him. The truth is if David heard from him or her a kind word, it would have improved his life. He needed a word of explanation for all this change in his life, a word of encouragement or pity or welcome, but what had Mr. Murdstone said and done made him disrespect him and hate him. At dinner, Mr. Murdstone seemed to be very fond of Clara and vice versa. But David didn't feel comfortable with that too. He knew that Mr. Murdstone's sister was coming to stay with them from that evening. When they went to the door to welcome her, Clara turned and kissed David quickly and secretly as if it were wrong.
She whispered that she wanted him to love and obey his new father. Miss Jane Murdstone arrived. She was a gloomy looking lady, dark like her brother, their faces and voices were very similar. She was welcomed and asked about me. Clara confirmed that I was her son. Miss Murdstone, I don't like boys. And greeted him. Miss Murdstone didn't go to visit them, but rather to stay with them forever. She started interfering with the housework by helping his mother. Soon she was changing everything in the house saying, I have come here to help you. You're much too pretty and thoughtless to have any troubles. Please give me the keys of the house and I'll take care of everything for you. From the moment she kept the keys with her, she became their jailer and both Clara and David were her prisoners. Clara protested a few times. One night, Miss Murdstone was talking about some plans for changes in the house and Mr. Murdstone was agreeing with her. Suddenly Clara began to cry saying that they could have asked her opinion first. Mr. Murdstone declared his surprise at Clara's reaction. She replied, You talk about firmness, but you wouldn't like it yourself. Firmness was a word the Murdstones used all the time which was another name for tyranny and control. When Clara objected to Miss Murdstone interference she said, It's very hard that in my own house. Mr. Murdstone. My own house? Clara. Clara in a weak voice and in fear. Our own house, I mean. It's very hard that in your own house, I am not allowed to give an opinion on household questions. I am sure I managed very well before we were married. Ask Peggotty if we didn't do very well. Miss Murdstone. Let there be an end to this. I am leaving tomorrow. Mr. Murdstone clarified that he didn't agree with that decision and that Clara was ungrateful. While Clara confirmed among her tears that she didn't want anyone to leave, but to be asked sometimes. Mr. Murdstone was urging her to apologize to his sister, threatening her that his love for her would come to an end because of her bad treatment of his sister. She retracted apologizing to them both and assuring them that she wouldn't object to anything anymore. Mr. Murdstone apologized to his sister as well saying that No more unkind words would be said to her ever again. David never heard his mother giving any opinion without asking Miss Murdstone first. David was learning his lessons at home. He heard the Murdstones suggesting sending him to a boarding school and his mom agreed of course, but no action was taken yet. David used to study at home. Clara was giving him the lessons. Yet, the Murdstones gave Clara lessons in that firmness that made their lives miserable. That's why they kept David at home. When he was living alone with his mother, he used to be quick to learn and willing to. But with the existence of the Murdstones, the lessons were very long and very hard, he could understand little or almost nothing. They were a daily misery. One morning, David handed his book to his mother. 
He started off well, but then he tripped over a word. Mr. Murdstone looked up. David tripped over another word. Miss Murdstone looked up. David's cheeks got red and tripped over many words and stopped. Clara. Oh, Davy, Davy. Mr. Murdstone. Clara, be firm with the boy. He knows his lesson or he does not know it. Miss Murdstone interfered, replying to him. He does not know it. She suggested on Clara give David the book and try one more time. He tripped over again. The Murdstones moved into the room which made him more nervous and continued making mistakes. Miss Murdstone said in a deep voice, Clara, to stop her. Mr. Murdstone took the book and hit David round the ears with it. Then, he sent him to his room. Most lessons were like this one. The worst was after the lessons, in which Mr. Murdstone gave him terrible maths problems. David would spend until dinner time trying to find the answer but in vain. Even when he did well during the lessons, Miss Murdstone could never stand to see him free. He had almost no free time to play with other children at his age. As the Murdstones think that. All children are snakes. After six months of this treatment, David had become silent and stupid. He was away from his mother, too. His only comfort was in the room next door to his. It was a library for his late father. He used to go there, sit and read for hours. One morning when David went for his lessons, Clara looked anxious. Miss Murdstone looked firm and Mr. Murdstone was holding a cane and warning David to be more careful today than usual or he would be beaten. David's performance was really bad that day that his mum cried for him. Miss Murdstone tried to stop her from calling her a fool. Mr. Murdstone took David to his room, he suddenly twisted David's head under his arm. He cried begging Mr. Murdstone not to beat him saying, I have tried to learn but I can't while you and Miss Murdstone are there. He beat him with the cane and David bit his hand hard. He beat David so hard as if he would beat him to death. David heard Clara and Peggotty running up the stairs and crying out. Then, he went out and locked the door from outside. David was lying on the floor crying, torn and hurt, and angry. His face was swollen, red, and ugly which made him cry again. The next morning, Miss Murdstone came telling him that he was free to walk in the garden for half an hour. That was repeated for five days. On the last night, he woke up to Peggotty's whispers through the keyhole. She warned him saying, be as soft as a mouse or the cat will hear us. David understood that she meant the Murdstones, so he was very careful. He asked her about his mother and whether she was angry with him. She answered him. She wasn't very angry with him. She told him that he would be sent to a boarding school by tomorrow and that he would see his mother before his leaving. Peggotty told him that.
She loved him but she preferred to keep away from him and his mother for their sake. They were both crying. Peggotty promised him saying, You must never forget me. I'll never forget you. I'll look after your mother, Davy. I won't leave her. He thanked her for that. In the morning, Miss Murdstone came and asked him to get dressed and go downstairs to have breakfast. There he found his mother, very pale and with red eyes. He ran into her arms and asked her pardon. She talked to him saying, How could you hurt anyone I love? Try to be better, pray to be better, I forgive you, but I am sad that you have such bad things in your heart. Forbiding Mr. Murdstone. Unfortunately, they had persuaded her that David was wicked. She seemed more sorry for that than for his going away. He tried to have his breakfast, but his tears covered his bread and butter. His mother sometimes looked at him and at Miss Murdstone and then looked away. When the cart arrived neither Peggotty nor Mr. Murdstone appear. His mother finally said to him, Goodbye, Davy. You're going for your own good. You'll come home in the holidays and be a better boy. Till the last moment, Miss Murdstone was standing there asking Clara to stop talking to David. So, he got into the cart and set off. The questions in this chapter are Answer the following questions. 1. Miss Murdstone was cruel. Explain. She wanted Clara to be firm with David. She wanted to control Clara and the house. She took the keys of the house to control it. She stopped Clara from being a good mother. She didn't want David to carry his baby brother. When Clara died, she fired Miss Peggotty and neglected David coldly. 2. The Murdstone's firmness prevented Clara from being a good mother. Explain. The Murdstones were usually firm with David. Mr. Murdstone asked Clara to be firm with him. She didn't wait for him when he came back from Yarmouth because she went with him for a walk. Mr. Murdstone punished David severely when he couldn't learn his lesson, Clara did nothing. She didn't prevent him from sending David to the boarding school. She didn't talk to him or say goodbye to him before going to school because Mr. Murdstone told her so. Comment on the following quotations. 1. If I have a difficult horse or dog to deal with, I beat it. These words were said by Mr. Murdstone to David in his house. David didn't like Mr. Murdstone. Mr. Murdstone wasn't kind to David. Before Clara's marriage, David was learning his lesson with his mother. After Mr. Murdstone had married Clara, David couldn't learn his lessons because Mr. Murdstone was attending. He threatened David in a cruel way that he would beat him. This reveals that Mr. Murdstone is a cruel man. 2. Jane Murdstone has been kind enough to come to help us and this is what she finds. 3. I won't forget you. I'll look after your mother. These words were said by Miss Peggotty to David. 
David was punished severely by Mr. Murdstone. David couldn't learn his lessons so Mr. Murdstone beat him hard. David bit his hand Mr. Murdstone locked him in his room. He ordered Clara not to see him. Miss Peggotty pitted him. She went to his room at night and told him through the door that he will be sent to school the day after. David asked her not to forget him. She promised that she wouldn't forget him and that she would look after his mother. This reveals that Miss Peggotty is a faithful friend to David and Clara. See you in the next chapters. If this content is beneficial to you, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to my channel. Bye.